In this video, I want to just review how we can set up our null and alternative hypotheses when we are performing a hypothesis test. Um, and then we'll move on and in the other slides in the future examples, we are going to take a look at how we can do hypothesis tests kind of for more classical approaches for comparing two independent populations. Um, so we've been working with doing these classical tests on one population, but now we're going to compare means and proportions from two different populations. But before we do so, um, let's just recall how setting up the hypotheses go, which would really be the uh, initial step in um, these hypothesis tests. So for part A, we're doing a hypothesis test on a mean, mu, and the null is mu is 50, and the alternative is mu is greater than 50. So this would be an example of a totally valid way to set up your hypotheses. And in addition, we want to identify whether these are left or right tailed. And since we have a greater than sign in this case over here, this is going to be a right tail test. So evidence for even more extreme than the observed would be even a, a mean that's even further to the right of our observed sample. Um, in the next example, we are looking at a null hypothesis which says P1 is less than P2 and an alternative that says they're equal. And remember, when we set these up, we should be using an equal sign in the null hypothesis and some sort of inequality in the alternative. So this is um, not a good set of hypotheses to use because we have the signs set up in the wrong places. And um, looking at part C, um, we have the same problem here. Now we're comparing two means and the null hypothesis has an inequality in it, which is incorrect. Um, the alternative hypothesis has an equality, which is also incorrect. And these, um, if we were to switch them, then that would be uh, a valid hypothesis. But they've got these signs, these inequality symbols set up in the wrong um, hypotheses. Um, for D, we're claiming in the null that P1 and P2 are equal, so there's no difference between these two um, populations in regards to some proportion. And the alternative is that those are not equal to each other. Um, this is a totally valid way to set up your hypotheses, and in this case, since the null hypothesis, or excuse me, since the alternative hypothesis has a not equal to sign, this would be a two-tail test. Um, in E, we are claiming that the sample mean is 5 in the null compared to the sample mean not being 5 in the null, and so here, um, the problem is that we should be stating these hypotheses using population parameters. So we're going to test the hypotheses by picking a sample and calculating a value for x bar, but the claims that we make should be about population parameters. And so um, that's the issue here, is that we need to use um, population parameters. Uh, in this case, since we're dealing with a mean, we would want to use mu not x bar, which is denoting a sample mean. Um, so this is a no um, for part E. Um, moving to F, um, the null hypothesis is that P is equal to a half, and the alternative is that P is less than 0.25. Um, so we have the right signs in the right place, namely, we have, I do have an equal sign here and an inequality here less than and I am stating these using P, which is a population parameter, but um, these should be directly competing claims, and there should be no gray area between them, and that means I should use the same value when I'm stating my hypotheses for uh, a single mean or a single proportion. These claims should have the same value in them. Uh, and so that's an issue here, that this and this, the point and the 0.25 are not equal to each other. Um, so that's a no for that one because um, there shouldn't be any gray area. Like what happens if P is 0.5, which one does that give me more evidence for? It's not clear. 
um, there should be no gray area in between them. And that's um, what's happening in G when we set this up correctly. We can now see that we have an equal to sign here, less than sign here, that's good. We have population parameters being used, that's good. And I have the same value here and over here. Um, so in this case, this would be a good way of setting up your hypothesis. So that's a yes. And since we have less than symbol in the alternative hypothesis, this tells us we have a left tail test. Um, and I just want to state, since um, some of you have taken some statistics um, previously, and you may have set up your hypotheses slightly differently. And let me just say that, for example, in part G, um, you could, instead of using an equal to sign, some people might choose to use a greater than equal to sign in this case, um, because we would want these claims to be directly competing with each other. Um, and so that's fine as well. Um, I'll just say that we're, we're using equal to signs here, um, but you could use either if you want. You um, do want to always make sure that the symbol that's being used in the null has inequality in it, and the symbol that's being used in the alternative is a strict inequality or a strict not equal to sign. Okay, so that's a good little exercise review reviewing how we set up our hypotheses. And next we're gonna jump in and take a look at how we can now set up tests to compare two different populations.